Accountancy Age Big Question. Today we're discussing what else? The financial crisis. We have our Accountancy Age experts on hand to tell you what's going on. First, we go to David Jetta. David, we've heard about uh, uh, runs on the bank, but uh, apparently we're now hearing about worries about runs on an audit firm. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a nightmare situation, really, Alex. Um, I was uh, talking to a, well, I was at, I was at a, a round table event, and Paul Boyle was talking about the fact that. Um, now, they're still, you know, we've still got the big four and they've all got the, the, there's, there's still all this stuff about audit concentration. And he said that when I'm in a situation where um, something which was impossible, say Lehman Brothers actually going down, went from impossible to the inevitable without even going past the probable stage. And just passing this on in terms of uh, accounting firms, you know, it's, he said it's very probable that, you know, an accounting firm could go down. And uh, on the back of this, Peter Elwin, uh, the analyst from uh, Kazanov, said that um, if, you know, by some uh, horrible uh, happenstance that, that you, you get an account, accounting firm uh, getting into trouble, then he said he could guarantee that the hedge funds would be uh, bang, banging on his door going, who are their clients? And then they'd, um, you know, they'd start taking their money out of those clients because, um, uh, because of the, uh, you know, because of uh, anything that might uh, be happening to those clients as well. And he said then these clients would actually um, you know, start going to go back to the audit firm and go, and go right, we are going to uh, you know, cut our links with you, which would see them actually, you know, this run on the bank actually happen, which is, a, you know, as I said before, a nightmare scenario. Yeah, I mean, I, in some ways it seems like a sort of um, far-fetched scenario, but at the same time, the enormously far-fetched things are, are happening at the moment. Exactly. Uh, uh, I mean... It, it's, I mean, given Paul Boyle's talking about it, it's very uh, ser- serious worry amongst senior regulators. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a, it, it may seem, as you say, a bit far-fetched, but you can't really rule anything out at the moment, and who knows what's going to be happening within a, uh, the next week, let alone the next month. OK. Gavin, if we could just come quickly to you. Um, the, the really big issue so far for accountants during the crisis, and particularly with, in the US with the, the bailout plan, has been uh, talks about a suspension of fair value. What, uh, what's the latest on this? Well, the latest that we understand it is that politicians around the world, both here in the UK through George Osborne of the Tory party, in Europe through Nicolas Sarkozy and uh, Emmanuel Barroso, and in the US through some of the Republican Party um, members, have called for a full suspension of mark-to-market accounting to allow banks to somehow rebuild their balance sheets and, and as a result, re-establish confidence in their abilities to do business on the markets. I mean, this is just shooting the messenger. I think that's the phrase that a lot of people have been using. I mean, the, uh, you can hardly blame the accounting for, for banks being reckless in their lending. Well, that's quite right. And I think the profession and uh, regulators alike would argue that the real problem was way before the accounting would ever happen. Uh, we can get into a technical debate about how you use fair value accounting, but I suspect the problem everyone will agree is going to be about risk assessment and how you know what you're putting your money into, essentially. The big problem now, I think, is as we go forward, if we end up in a position with mark-to-market fair value accounting suspended, is whether we would create further confusion in the markets for investors. After all, they're the people that rely on these standards, the people who put their money into these banks. If they cannot rely on those standards because fair value is not there, then it seems to be entirely probable that we'll deepen the confusion and, under- and, uh, and misunderstanding about the banks and their finances. Uh, uh, what's interesting, I suppose, is what, what the IASB thinks. I mean, they've, they've kept fairly quiet uh, uh, during the, the current crisis, probably quite sensibly. What, what's your impression of what, where, where they're standing on this? I think they've maintained a, a, um, a dignified and diplomatic silence. And the reason for that is they don't want to get caught into falling on one side of the argument or the other. Historically, the ISB has stood firmly by fair value. But also, if they 
go ahead and make public pronouncements about it at this time, get involved in the row, what they don't want to be doing is contributing to anything that might threaten any form of rescue plan that's underway. That's not the kind of area they want to get into. They don't want to be people who affect economic policy. Mm. Uh, it's obviously an extraordinarily delicate situation. Uh, David, you, you were talk I mean, when you were talking to, to Paul Boyle and to other senior figures, what's, what's their take on this fair value debate? Well, the, the consensus, Alex, not to put a, uh, too fine a point on it, is that uh, no, suspending fair value is, uh, is madness, really. Um, as you say, what would you actually replace it with? And if it, if it was taken out, then you've got some serious comparability issues. Uh, between, say, this year and last year, when you actually say when this crisis is actually over to go back to uh, the, uh, having fair value again, and then you've got more compar comparability issues with uh, this year and the, and the following years. So there's a, there's a real kind of a belief that this is being used as a political football by people who don't really know what they're talking about. I, th I think just to come in there, one of the bigger issues is going to be if the US is in a position of going alone on suspending mark to market, Europe will feel it will have no choice but to follow suit. The reason being will be that European banks and institutions will be at an unfair competitive advantage when compared to US banks all trading on a global market. If the US banks are allowed to suspend fair, to fair value, mark-to-market accounting, if they're allowed to somehow use some form of long-term value determined by banks' managers, then European banks will want to do the same because otherwise their balance sheets will look much worse off. And what we end up with is a domino effect around the world where everybody has to follow suit with the Americans and suspend fair value. Otherwise, we end up with a global marketplace where, once again, nobody can rely upon the numbers or rely upon any form of comparability. Uh, I mean, it's, it's also, apart from anything else, the, the Europeans seem particularly keen on suspending fair value. It's not just the Republicans in the US. I mean, it, Barroso and uh, Nicolas Sarkozy as well are, are also talking about it. I think that's quite right. I think historically that's correct. And historically it's been about the position of European banks, especially notably French banks, and the, the French have in the past taken a lead on attacking fair value as a standard. I think this time around it's stimulated by something else. It's a competition issue. They don't want to see the American banks in a competitive position with m very much stronger looking balance sheets compared to their European counterparts. It just, they just don't want it to happen. And I, and I think that goes to, when you go back to your earlier question about the IASB, I think there's a belief in there that whatever happens, it has to be a unified international action. They don't want, and they think it's very silly, of unilateral action, like the Irish government with guaranteeing the deposits and balance sheets of Irish banks. It's a unilateral action that puts other countries in an unfair position. They don't want that to happen with standards. Well, it sounds like a delicate moment for accounting standards as much as for the global economy. Gavin, David, thanks for joining us this week. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.